Yo, what is going on everybody? Carnage back here again. And, uh, just a warning, I am kind of under the weather at the moment. But, uh, I did just get back from, uh, Kansas City Comic Con, Planet Comic Con, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that was taking place in Kansas City. Met, uh, met some amazing people, went with my friends, had fun times, got a lot of books, spent more money than I probably should have, if I'm honest. Uh... <clears throat> And I was going to try to film, but there was just way too many people for me to, you know, kind of do that. So I sadly was not able to take any footage. So I do apologize for that. Uh, I was going to originally, but too many people and I didn't, you know, want to you know, have to blur out everyone's face uh, doing that. And I really didn't get to, you know, do a ton of comic hunting because uh, I was mostly going along with the people who been to a lot of comic cons already <clears throat> and I was just kind of hanging out with them for the most part so didn't really get to do much hunting up until the second day and on the third day was just kind of very very slow so didn't uh, pick up any other books I was tempted to pick up the first John Constantine though but I had already spent a lot of money up until that point so just didn't really uh you know align with it but maybe next time and uh, uh first thing i'm going to show up is this is actually my own personal copy that i've had since i was a kid but i did get this signed by the main man matthew lillard himself such an honor meeting him such a nice guy and then i also went to the screen panel as well he said he was going to curse as shaggy but he did not but let me just say such a an amazing man so like blessed that I got to meet him it was such an honor man like such a cool dude and now I have you know his signature on my childhood copy and I'm gonna hold on to that for the rest of my life All right. and that was uh, one of like three things I picked up that was not uh, you know superhero related uh, the next one up is this really cool Homer Simpson duck that I just really liked uh, this was about 20 bucks, but I mean, it looks, it's beautiful. I really like it. <clears throat> now, let me just take it out of this. Such a cool duck, though. I kind of want to get this framed and just uh, hang it up. I'll get to that eventually, though. need to find a big enough frame for it. I do apologize for what took me so long. Like I said, kind of sick, and my brain's not wanting to work very well. And then the last thing I picked up that wasn't uh, really comic book related was this very awesome Spider-Punk t-shirt. Uh, I did pick this up on my last day. And it's Spider-Punk, so why wouldn't I pick this up? Like, look at that. That's just so cool, man. So cool. And uh, the last thing I'm going to show before all of the uh, comics is I did pick up a silver centurion this is actually my favorite iron man armor <coughs> pardon me one of my favorite iron man armors never found it at walgreens found it for 15 bucks so i thought that was just a phenomenal price for it i do apologize if, uh, for the pause uh my throat uh i felt a cough coming on so i kind of paused the video real quick which might happen more than once. Just a warning. Alright. Uh, I'm going to show the graphics I picked up first. Uh, the first graphic novel I picked up is Invincible Presents, Rex Blode and Adam Eve. Really big fan of Invincible. Uh, and I'm trying to learn as much as I can about, you know, all of Invincible. So I did get uh, this. This basically has, like, you know, Adam Eve and Rex Blode's origin in it. Which, uh, I, for those of you who watch the TV show, uh, they did do a special on Adam Eve, I know. Really good episode, really liked it. And they haven't done one for Rexplode yet, but kind of hoping they do. Uh, and then, uh, I picked this up, uh, Symbiote Spider-Man. Uh, this was, like, half price, and it looked very interesting, so I was just like, why not? <clears throat> really, really good book never read it but it just looked very good in my opinion just because you know it's symbiote spider-man why wouldn't i 
you know, want to pick it up. <clears throat> and those were the only two graphic novels I picked up. And all these books I'm about to show were 25 cents each. And they had a deal where it was buy four, get one free. So this entire stack costed me $3. And I, I picked this one up because I thought it was, you know, something else, but I was mistaken. Like, it is the origin of Blue Beetle, which, pretty cool. But mostly picked it up just because I thought the cover was kind of cool. <clears throat> I also did find quite a bit of the Earth 2 stuff, and by quite a bit I mean like three or four issues. Got issue number 12, issue number 13, issue number 14, which I'm a big fan of Earth 2. I am slowly uh, making my way to completing the series. But really, really happy I finally got to, you know, kind of get more for that collection. And then next up is New Avengers issue number 24. I believe this is part of the Jonathan Hickman run, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yep, Jonathan Hickman. And just to prove I'm not going crazy, Jonathan Hickman right there. Yeah, this is a variant cover, which, I mean, it's a pretty cool variant cover. I also think this is the first time Incursions, this is the first mention of Incursions, or that was issue one. I know it's one of the issues uh, in Jonathan, in that Avengers run. And then I found Exiles number 44, big fan of Exiles, uh, solely trying to build that up. I uh, found only one issue and that was issue number 44, but it's such a cool cover, I really like it. <clears throat> And this one I did pick up just mostly for the cover, just because, you know, it's Power Girl. But that's it. Like, why wouldn't I want to pick this up? It's so beautiful, man. JSA classified issue number four. Really cool. And then, you know, just looking at that. So cool. So cool, man. <coughs> I do apologize for that. Uh, I did also find Ultimate Fantastic Four number four. Uh, really cool thing cover. I always really liked this cover. I've seen it a few times. I just never had the chance to pick it up. Oh, it even still has the um, uh, the pamphlet in it. It's cool. Oh, and then the Scooby-Doo too. Well, that's funny. Yeah, I haven't really read a ton of the Ultimate Fantastic Four other than uh, the Marvel Zombie stuff slash issue number one and a couple others and this is actually an issue i picked up a while ago and the thing is i picked this up uh the day before i found out that doug Mankey, the guy who actually drew these was there and if i knew that i was gonna you know get to be there uh that he was there i mean i would have you know had him sign this copy which i did find for 25 cents and this is actually a way better copy than mine so I do kind of regret taking this out of my bag because I could have had him sign it, which would have been phenomenal. Just because this is one of my favorite covers from the uh, Blackest Night Green Lantern. Just such a beautiful color scheme on it. Just beautiful line work, beautiful art in general. Very, very happy I found that for 25 cents. And then I found a really beat up copy of one of my favorite Bizarro covers. Uh, this is Superman Action Comics issue number 785. This is definitely a really lower grade copy. Definitely reader. Mostly picked it up just because I really like this Bizarro cover. That's the only reason why I picked it up. And then I found uh, the New Avengers issue number 2. I did pick up number 1 a few months ago. Uh, and I was going to wait till I got at least the first like 2 or 3 issues before I started reading it and finally found in issue number two. So I'll be uh, definitely getting to read that pretty soon. <clears throat> and then I also found not one, not two, but three issues of The Ultimates, which I was kind of surprised these were in there just because they're such cool looking covers, man. Now, uh, I haven't really read anything Ultimates related. I've watched the movie which, let me just say, way different than the comic, just because it doesn't deal with a lot of uh, the things that happen in the uh, 
the movie doesn't deal with a lot of what happens in the comic. Uh, because Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, uh, they are doing things together, which no brother and sister should ever do with each other. That's all I'm going to say about that. And let me just say, this Hawkeye and Black Widow cover just two of the coolest ones ever. So cool. Really happy I found these. And this next lot I'm going to show was all $2 books. <clears throat> and I think I found some pretty good stuff in there that was less than... That was definitely worth at least a little more than $2. Uh, I did get... What is this? Spider-Woman... Yeah, Spider-Woman number 5. This is the Alex Ross version. Which, kind of surprised that, that was in a $2 bin. Like, I mean, it looks like it's in pretty good condition. Like, it does have, like, the one spine tick, like, right there. But I found nothing else wrong with it. Like, if you can kind of see that right there. So, so I was surprised that was in there. And then, this is actually a cover I've been... I uh, tried to find when the series originally came out. This is actually uh, King in Black issue number one, the tattoo version. Such a amazing looking cover, man. Really, really glad I got to have this, or got to find this, I mean. Let me just say, this King of Black storyline was definitely my favorite thing when it came out. <clears throat> and then up next is issue number four to Civil War from the Secret Wars storyline. Now, I have issues one through three of this, and this is like a five or six issue set series. Pretty sure it's five, though. But really cool book. Really happy I got to uh, get issue number four. And I believe it goes up to issue number five, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, to be concluded in issue number five. Yep. So, only a five-issue limited series, which, not bad. Really happy about that. I also did find quite a bit of uh, Injustice stuff. Uh, this is Injustice Year 4, Issue 11. I also did find Fantastic Four Antithesis, uh, the Medusa cover from The Timeless. Uh, Alex Ross Timeless. Sorry, kind of had a brain fart there for a second. Like I said, kind of sick. Uh, this is Antithesis number three. Really happy I found this one as well. Kind of surprised he had as many uh, timeless variants in there as he did, because he also had a Falcon one. Actually, now that I think about, about it, there was only three of them, and it was Falcon, Medusa, and <coughs> Spider-Woman. I picked up two of the three because I already had the Falcon one. Uh, now, up next is Injustice Year 4, Issue 6. Really cool cover. I do like this one. And then Injustice 2, number 9. This is where they bring back uh, Alfred from the Dead, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Might be wrong about that. Or something like that. It's something similar to that, I think. Or is this when Booster Gold does? Um, oh, no, they do bring Alfred back in this. I was right. Cool. <laughs> And then I found this very, very cool variant cover to Hell Arisen issue number one. Really do like the Batman Who Laughs versus White uh, white Martian Lex Luthor. Really do like that. Really cool cover. Really happy I found that. And then I found Injustice Gods and Monsters, or Gods Among Us, year four, issue number four. Again, another cool cover. Really, really happy I found this one. And then a couple of these I picked up just because... Uh, I actually read the first issue to this series, and I really liked it, and I tried finding the other two, uh, like, in the wild, and I truly was very tempted to pick both of these up on eBay, but I couldn't really justify spending $10 each book, but very glad I got these for $2 a piece, so I found issue number three and issue number two, so very excited to finish slash read that, and then I have another cool bizarro cover injustice year five issue number nine ah, such a cool cover man oh and this is the one i was thinking of okay so this is where trickster and bizarro are like buddies that's cool i like that bizarro was definitely one of my favorite characters in this series man 
so sad that he was killed off so quickly. All right, sorry about that. Kind of had a coughing fit again. But uh, I know I have issue number one to this series, and I do have the variant cover to it. Uh, this is Deadpool and Cable Split Second issue number two. Really happy I found this, because I remember enjoying the first issue quite a bit, and I really do like the whole Back to the Future uh, kind of homage. Now, I haven't read the first issue in, gosh, I don't even know how how long, man. Like, maybe, like, I want to say, like, maybe, like, since about this year, man. Like, since about 2016. <laughs> like, that's the closest I can probably think of to when I read the first issue, because I know I picked it up when issue number one was relatively new. Oh, excuse me. Again, I do apologize. I am kind of under the weather. So, I do apologize for knocking my camera over for a bit. Uh, I will more likely not edit this just because, you know, I like keeping it real with you guys. Just, you know, being 100%, you know, natural with everything. So, and then going on to the next stuff, which uh, a good portion of it uh, is Invincible stuff, which helps fill out my Invincible collection quite a bit, actually. But I'm going to be... Now, uh, I only have four books left over that are not Invincible related. So, the first one up is issue number 160 of Ultimate Spider-Man, and this is the death of Ultimate Spider-Man. This is one of my favorite comic issues. I've never found it in the wild. So, so glad I got it. Especially for, you know, that cheap of a price, man. I also did see issue number one for $50. I was very tempted to pick that up as well, but I did not go and pick it up, sadly. But I have issue number 160, which definitely a good uh, substitute, I think. And I also did find Ultimate Spider-Man number 33. I believe this is the first appearance of Ultimate Venom. Or it's a second. One of those two. Uh, but uh, it does say 25 up there, but uh, I negotiated and got it down to 20. So pretty cool. Really glad that they uh, accepted my, you know, counter offer. Really cool cover as well. Really do like the whole tongue, teeth, looking gnarly and everything. And this was actually the last book I picked up on, you know, my trip to Kansas City Comic Con. Immortal Hulk, issue number one. This is one of the books I've been trying to find for so long, and I've been so tempted to pick it up on eBay for the past, like, four years, man. But I just never really had the opportunity to, you know, really pull the trigger. And I know they did have quite a bit of Immortal Hulk in the box, but... Uh, issue number one was definitely the one that was most worth it to me. They also did have issue two, uh, issue four. I didn't really look through the whole box because once I saw this, I just thought, saw no need to finish the whole box. But really happy I found this. Such a cool book, such a cool story. Really, really happy I finally got that in my collection. <clears throat> and this is the last book I picked up. This is actually one I've been trying to find for a while. Uh, this is Daredevil number 25 by Chip Zdarsky. Uh, this is actually the issue where Elektra finally becomes uh, her version of Daredevil. Really, really happy I finally got to ha get this. Such a beautiful cover. Such an amazing story. Uh, I haven't read all of it. I've read bits and pieces, but let me just say, really, really good story. And I do recommend you guys check out Chip, Star Chip Zdarsky's run. Sorry, I kind of blanked out on the name for a second. And all of this is just Invincible books. Now, I'm going to kind of organize it a little bit. Just so I can put, like, the best book last. All right, there we go. <coughs> all right, and I did pick up most of this uh, from one booth uh, who had a deal going on where it was buy one, get one. Uh, that's the ones with all these stickers on them. Uh, so I found issue number 39, issue 38, which 
let me just say, really, really happy I got these, because I think this is actually going to be coming up uh, in the next season, so really, really excited for that. I did find the variant cover to number 135. This is Gwyn Vincible. Really surprised this one was in there, because, you know, a lot of people like Spider-Gwen slash Gwen in general, and a lot of people, you know, like Invincible. So, kind of surprised this one was in there, but really, really happy I got it. And there was two of these. I was very tempted to pick up both of them, but I did not just because, you know, I don't really need two of them. And then I have issue number 118, which, a beautiful looking cover, by the way. Really do like it. I really do also like that the baby's just kind of flying as well. It's kind of cute. Really, really cool. And then I have issue number 100. Really, really badass cover. One of my favorite ones uh, from the entire uh, Invincible run. Uh, along with this one, which is also, also issue number 100. Really, really badass. Really do like it. And I did pick up this one on purpose just because... It, just look at it. Why wouldn't I? It's so cool, man. So, so cool. And then I also got issue number 98 from that same booth. Such a beautiful book, man. Again, another one of my favorite covers. And then issue number 75, The Viltrumite War. I believe this is... I might be wrong, but this might be the one where Omni-Man gets uh, horrifically beaten. I might be wrong about that. Or he gets his heart ripped in half or something. Something like that, I might be wrong. Alright, and this last book I'm about to show was one of the most expensive ones that I did pick up. Like, the most I spent on, you know, just one singular book uh, before this last one was about $30.00. And this one kind of almost triples it. Uh, that is issue number 110. And this one does kind of have some weird fingerprints on it. Like if you guys can see that, like right there. Which does kind of suck, but I mean... I, I truthfully couldn't pass this book up, man. Like it's such an amazing cover. I just could not say no to it. And for those of you who do not know what this book is... <coughs> Uh, Invincible 110 is where I think her name is Anissa but anyway the lady Viltrumite with like the short black hair uh, she um, kind of forces herself on Invincible and she does get pregnant from it and it kind of affects you know Invincible for the entirety of the story after this event and I know they did also have her first appearance at the con too was also tempted to pick that up, but I'd already spent quite a bit uh, up until that point. So I sadly did not get it, but I am so happy I finally got issue number 110. So that's basically everything I have for you guys today. Again, I do apologize if I'm not like as full of energy uh, as I normally am in these videos. Uh, I am kind of dealing with a really severe head cold at the moment. So, I do apologize, but I do promise that in the next video I will be at least more energy, have more energy than I do now. So, anyway, thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate all of you, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.